Welcome, fellow freaks, geeks, and nostalgic peeps to my channel. Slime and Slasher is where, yeah, we talk about everything from Nickelodeon slime to horror movie slashers, but plenty of stuff in between, including books. And honestly, mostly books, but sometimes other things. However, this video, it is another book themed video, yeah. So sue me, I'm sorry. I love books! Read books, bitch, says my earrings. Anyway, guys, I am so excited to tell you about today's video. I will be giving you a modern book rec and saying if you like this book, you might want to try that book. And the other book that I'm going to be comparing the modern book to will be a vintage book. The majority of these are all horror books, so we're basically comparing a modern horror book, in some cases more than one modern horror book, with a vintage book. All right, so without further ado, let's go to the short intro, and when we come back, we will go into all the book wrecks. Welcome back, guys! If you are new here, hi, welcome! My name is Kelsey, I am the creator of this channel, and I love all things vintage, vintage horror, I love 80s and 90s nostalgia, but I also like modern horror too, and I have been dabbling in some romance, so I think I'm about to be in my romance era, so stay tuned if you like romance too. If you like any of that, I think you could want to stick around and sub, because we might have a lot in common. Alright, so this video I am so excited about. I wasn't even intending on filming this video today. This idea just popped into my head and my first pick it's going to be surrounding how this idea came into my head so we'll just get into it all right so the first book that I'm going to talk about is Fantastic Land. This is a great isolated summer setting of an amusement park and these workers get trapped in said amusement park when a hurricane passes over Florida and no rescue crews can reach these people and so they have to hunker down and just stay put until they are rescued. There is food, however, people start to go a little stir crazy and alliances form. This is told in interview format, but if you like great interesting summer reads with unique settings, this could be for you if you haven't already read it. But if you have already read it and loved it, you may also enjoy dun -dun -dun -dun, The Drive-In by Joe R. Lansdale. Now this is a collection of all three books. It is a trilogy, however you can read the first book as a standalone, and that is the only one of the series that I have read thus far. However, the vibes in The Drive-In definitely remind me of some vibes from Fantastic Land, and this is why. The Drive-In, you've got these people at a drive-in, checking out some movies for like a marathon, but then they get trapped in the drive-in and yeah, alliances form and people start to go a little stir crazy as well. So this one's a little bit more weird than Fantastic Land, but if you like the idea of be people being stuck in a place and then people slowly losing their shit, then you might like one or the other, depending on which one you have read or have not yet read. So this one, by the way, has a great audiobook, so. And this is available, even though it's a vintage book, you can get it in a newer edition like this bind up, but you could also get a Kindle copy. So you are able to find this book. You don't have to have a vintage, rare, you know, old school copy. And speaking of that, a lot of the books on my list, almost every one except for one book, is available in a newer edition. So whether that be a newer published edition, like a soft cover, hard cover, it's available. Or some cases, some of these books have audiobooks now. So shout out to publishers like freaking Crossroad Press, who are keeping vintage horror alive. I think that's such a big deal. More people should be supporting publishers like this. If you want to read vintage horror that is out of print, these publishers are bringing them back into print in newer editions, and so we should support what they're doing if you want to dip your toe into vintage horror or if you are, are already a fan of vintage horror. Okay, next recommendation. If you liked the book Hex, I think you could also really like the vintage book Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. This is going to be the most well-known book on this entire list, so excuse me if you've already read it, but if you like grief in your horror as well as supernatural elements, I really think you could like one book or the other depending on which one you've already read. And if you haven't read either, you should really check them out because I think both of these books are really fantastic and I really love grief horror and both books have that kind of element to it, but it has a lot of supernatural 
natural, wonderful, intriguing elements and mystery elements to the stories as well. Next up, dun, 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 dun. if you read and enjoyed Mayfly, you might really love Elizabeth by Ken Greenhall. I think Mayfly is a little more engaging in terms of more colorful when it comes to the writing style. This one's more basic when it comes to the writing style, more dry, but I like that about Elizabeth. And Ken Greenhall as a writer who is the writer of this book. However, he also published this under the name Jessica Hamilton. So you can find it under Jessica Hamilton or Ken Greenhall. But what these two books have in common are an unhinged female main character and you're in her head and you're like, whoa, this is messed up. And yeah, both of these women are unhinged and also a little bit dangerous. And I kind of like that. So Maeve is the main character here. Elizabeth is the main one here. And I really think if you like one, you could definitely like the other. All right, next up, one of my favorite books that I read last year, Come Closer by Sarah Gron. I love possession type of stories and also character studies, and this was both, or featured both of those elements. And so if you enjoyed Come Closer, a vintage book you might also enjoy is Familiar Spirit by Lisa Tuttle. So of course, Valancourt Books is the most well-known publisher who republishes old vintage horror, but like I said before, there are a lot of other publishers doing that as well. But this one is so good, and it is available as part of the official paperbacks from hell line that Valancourt has released and I just think it's it's wonderful both of these you're following a woman main character and she's battling with forces that she does not completely understand and she's like what the hell is going on and why and both feature relationship issues kind of heavily in the story so I really think if you've read one and liked one you would most likely like the other Next up, I'm going to compare three modern books to a vintage book, and they each kind of mirror certain elements of said vintage recommendation. So we'll just get into it. The first modern book I'm going to talk about is We Spread by Anne Reed, a very thought-provoking book, very character-focused. We're in this woman's head and she's losing her memories and she's going off to stay at an old folks home and she doesn't know if she could trust her memories and it's kind of just like a very psychological type of story and because of the psychological element of the story it very much reminds me of the cipher however two totally different writing styles so this one the cipher the vintage horror wreck is more gritty dark whereas we spreads more emotional what reminds me of the cipher is the psychological element this contemplation of life and the meaning of things in the universe. I feel like both The Cipher and We Spread has that, but they're very, very different books at the core of the style of the books. And some other modern books that also remind me of The Cipher are This Thing Between Us and Scanlines, but both for different reasons. So these books are more aligned to the style of The Cipher, especially Scanlines. Scanlines is dark and gritty and creepy, but it also has some weird elements. You could find all of those same elements in the cipher as well. That's why I think if you've read scan lines, you could possibly like the cipher. And last but not least, the thing between us, because of the weirdness in this and the cosmic elements in this, I do think if you overall like cosmic -y elements that you find in books like this, you could overall just like the cipher. So yeah, three different modern books that all remind me in one way, shape, or form of the cipher. And I think if you like any of those, you should try this. But again, they're all for different reasons. If you don't like Cosmic at all, then I would steer clear. But the reason we spread is very reminiscent to the Cypher to me, like I said, is basically being in a character's head, basically this philosophical type of contemplation that both those books make me think about and ponder on. So there you have it. Those are my comparisons with the Cypher. Next up, huge shout out to one of my Patreon members and fellow friends, Melissa. Melissa M specifically. I know a lot of Melissa's on my Patreon, but Melissa M kind of gave me a really great suggestion because I was brainstorming certain books that I wanted to compare Diviola with. And she was like, what about The Elementals by Michael McDowell? And I said, holy shit, yes, that is a perfect recommendation. So if you have read the recent release by Tor Nightfire, Diviola, and loved it, then you may also like the elementals. Now, the difference between them, this has more of like a feminist leaning angle, especially towards the end, and the elementals does not. But what they have in common is, I think, a really unique haunted house type of setting. So it's not your same old dusty, musty haunted house. This one, it's taking place in a bright, sunny 
Italian villa during the summertime. The Elementals takes place on a bright, sunny beachside, three houses on a beach. Both have really great horror imagery, and both take a look at two dysfunctional families. And two dysfunctional families are the people who are at the core of the story suffering in the haunted areas. So both very unique summer reads that definitely have a lot of vibes and a lot of things in common. Next up, if you read and enjoyed Edenville, and I know not a lot of people have, but if you did read and enjoy this, I think you could possibly like Book of the Damned by D.A. Fowler. And the reason I compare the two is because both are super weird, super crazy, lots of action takes place. So the cipher that I mentioned earlier is a vintage book that is weird in a very specific philosophical thought-provoking way, whereas Book of the Damned is a different kind of weird. It's more zany weird, just like Edenville is zany weird. So it's not like, oh, pondering life weird, but zany weird. This also has some very dark, very crazy elements, and both, I think, bring the horror. When the horror you know, pops up in the story, it really goes there. Also, I think both have some really weird off, off brand humor that not everyone would like, some dark humor. Both of these stories, I think, have that, especially Book of the Damned, there's like a penis used like as a lightsaber at one point. Anyway, but I gotta say, Book of the Damned is bleak. You should check triggers because there are some outdated elements, but I really think if you Liked Edenville, you have a good chance of liking Book of the Damned. All right, next up, Knock Knock Open Wide, another recent release from Tor Nightfire, and I really enjoyed this one. You've got a lot of Irish folklore at this core of the story, but it's also about this relationship between two women, and it's also got a little bit about this TV show at the core of the story. Very weird elements in here, some unexplained elements, but overall, the vibes, the atmosphere, totally knocks out of the park. And if you're looking for similar Irish themed vibes, I think this is a little bit of a stretch to compare these two, but in terms of Irish horror, there's not that much out there. And one that I think fits the vibe of Knock Knock Open Wide the most in terms of referencing Irish lore, I think would be The Keepsake by Paul Husson. And you can find The Keepsake in a new edition on Amazon, and you could find vintage copies for very cheap on thrift books. So this one's a little bit harder to find than some of the other vintage books I've been talking about, but you can find it. And this one, there is a cursed Irish stone. It says, It was only a souvenir of Ireland, a small stone that bore, if you looked very closely, the suggestion of a human face. She couldn't know that only the power of St. Patrick had kept its evil in check through the centuries, that in her own home when the lights were out, it could become a gateway for an unimaginable malevolence, with a thirst for blood and her unborn child. So not exactly the same, but the Irish vibes for both are there. The slow burn nature for both is there. And I just really had a great time with both of these. I read them in two separate years for two separate St. Patty's Day, you know, reading vlogs that I did. Next up, I'm going to talk about a great cult book called Devil's Creek, which I read earlier this year. I really had such a wonderful time with this. It's a fast-paced cult story in this small town, and I love the supernatural elements. Not all cult stories go in the supernatural direction. This one does, and it's very action-packed. A lot of cult stories can be slow burns and character studies, or sometimes it just... It revolves around a group of characters and really dives into their psyches and why they join the cult and this and that. But at the core of the story, sometimes there's not a lot of action in those types of stories. This one, however, I feel like even though it's a long book, it is relatively fast-paced. And just there's a lot of heavy horror elements in this that reminded me a lot of dun -dun -dun -dun, Nelfs. Now, Nelfs I have touted a lot over the past year and a half. And the thing I talk about the most in this book is the Nelfs. There are these little cartoon characters, which remind me a lot of Smurfs, that appear in the story. And they do taunt this girl, Heaven, and harass her and start bashing Heaven's mom to her. They're like, your mom's a bitch, your mom's a whore. And I keep emphasizing that, and I think I'm giving people the wrong idea, because that's what started my enjoyment of this book. However, the book veers off into a very fun, out there, zany direction, and there's definitely occult vibes in this book once you get further in, and I think those vibes are what reminds me of Devil's Creek and vice versa. So it might seem like a really weird comparison, but to me it works because if you like anything occult-related, I think both of these would do, because 
they both have really heavy supernatural elements to them, which make them unique in different ways. So this one, again, it, it's just a very zany book. It takes a little bit to get started. I didn't like the very beginning where we were mostly, you know, following Heaven's mother and how she's worried about her daughter and how she's reacting to her divorce from her husband, yada, yada, yada. But once the action picks up, I really like how it kept me guessing and goes in crazy directions. So if you're going into this just looking for Nelf action, you might be disappointed because what you should go into this for is the crazy direction it brings you in and, you know, just go along for the ride and be surprised at where you wind up. Because where you wind up is really an awesome part of this book. Similar to how this kind of wraps up and where you end up with this one. This one kind of has some, like, mysterious elements. I don't want to get too much into it, but there are vibes, especially towards the end for both of these, that remind me of each other. And that's why I think it's a good comparison. Another book I'd like to talk about is Of Foster Homes and Flies by Chad Lutsky. A wonderful, compelling coming-of-age story. And you just feel for the little boy at the center of the story. And that brings me to my vintage wreck, which is Fear by Ronald Kelly. Another coming-of-age type of story where you do really come to care about the main character, who is a little boy who's dealing with so many things that are going against him. Like, his grandmother is really sick, and you just feel for him. And his name is Jeb. He's a great main character. But if you read and loved A Foster Home and Flies, I really think you could love Fear by Ronald Kelly. Both really great coming-of-age stories with two great main characters. They both are very, very compelling. You really feel for them. You have a lot of empathy for them as the reader, reading along on their journeys. I just think that these two books really are great books, and this is one of my favorite wrecks on this list because I really, really I really am confident about this. If you like this, I really think you could like this one. Next up, another one of my favorites that I read last year, A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. Now, this comparison's a little bit of a stretch, but bear with me and I will explain why this book reminds me of dun, 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 this vintage book, Geek Love by Catherine Dunn. So very different writing styles. I think that specifically if you enjoy dysfunctional families, you will like, you know, both of these books. But if you don't like more literary style writing, it could, you know, dissuade you from liking this book. I know a friend who DNF'd this, so it's not a hit for everybody uh, just because you like this one. But if you like stories with dysfunctional families at the core, with disturbing elements, with, you know, elements that make you really think, I think you have a possibility of liking, you know, one or both. Hopefully both, because that's the whole thing behind this recommendation. So I love The Head Full of Ghosts. Like I said, this family hires a documentary film crew to come and film and help their daughter, who they believe to be possessed. So it's kind of weird that they get this film crew to come because it's not something that you would ordinarily do. The family really needs the money after they've exhausted a lot of other resources. So it's a hesitant agreement to have the film crew come in, but still. It's definitely a dysfunctional family at the core because they've got a lot of things going on, a lot of problems. And Geek Love is, yes, a dysfunctional family at the core of the story. But there is a mystery involved as well, and there's also really, really disturbing characters involved in this book. We've got a family, and the mother and father of the family, the head of the family, decide to start breeding their own freaks to ensure the longevity of their traveling carnival. So that in itself is really dysfunctional and very exploitative and it's insane. It's disturbing to say the least. So there is a lot of differences between these two books. The writing style is probably the main difference. Uh, I do think this one's way easier for people to like than this one. However, I really do think that the dysfunctional family ties them together and makes it so that you could possibly like one if you like the other. All right, lastly, I have two modern books that are very specific, and it reminds me of a wonderful vintage book, but this is the only vintage book I'm going to talk about that is not easy to find. So if you go looking for this online, even if you try to buy a used copy, it's going to be very expensive, very hard to find. There is no Kindle edition, there's no audio, there is no new edition published by another publisher. It's out of print. However, you can find it on archive.org, so on the Internet Archive, which is such a great resource if you're looking to read an older book, but you haven't found it at a used bookstore, you can't afford it online, etc, etc. So with that out of the way, let me tell you about the two books. First off, We Sold Our Souls by Grady Hendrix. This one 
very heavily music focused. There is a big musical aspect to this book. And that same thing also goes for Schrader's Chord, another Tour Night Fire recent release. Has lots to do with music and it actually has a lot of vintage horror vibes in this book so I feel like if you've liked Schrader's Chord you might be able to like a lot of vintage horror because there are a lot of elements in this just reminds me of a lot of vintage horror but the very specific thing that these two books have in common music of course and also a strong woman character in this one so these two books remind me of the vintage book Death Song. So if you read either or both of these and liked it, you might really love Death Song. Death Song, we are following a really badass country singer. She is awesome. And her name is Billy Lee Kidd. She's the queen of country music, but the little gal from New Mexico had picked the wrong song to sing because all around her people were dying, hideously destroyed by voices that sang fiendish tunes of dark, dreaded terror. A chorus of doom was ushering in the reign of evil on Earth, and unless Billy Lee could find a way to drown out the demonic sound, the minions of darkness would tighten their stranglehold, plunging the world into a maelstrom of violence and hell. Billy Lee kept singing, knowing full well nothing in this world or beyond could save her and all humanity if she hit one wrong note. So this is so much fun. It's so bonkers. Now with all of the vintage books, be aware there are still probably outdated elements, problematic elements. So still maybe research it a bit further and still be prepared to dislike it perhaps, if you're more of a modern horror reader. But if you liked either of these books, I really think you could like Death Song because there are just so many common threads between all three of these books, especially really in the case of like how there's all, so much supernatural elements, both of these have that in common. Of course, there's still the music element, but I feel like the woman main character, the main lead female protagonist, both of these have that heavily in common. This also has some occult kind of supernaturally elements. So I don't know. I thought that would be a great comparison. All right, guys, do you think my comparisons are accurate? Do you think it's completely out there if you've read both of the recommendations and you don't think they match? I'd like to know that. But if you are intrigued and want to check out one of the recs because of the other one, let me know. I am so excited about this video idea. Because my friend Christine read The Drive-In by Joe R. Lansdale recently, it got me thinking about that book again, which reminded me like, wow, this book is so much like Fantastic Land in the isolated setting, the groups of people, you know, that kind of thing. And then I started to wonder what other modern books I could compare to vintage books. And then it just snowballed from there. So I am so excited I decided to do this because it just was a lot of fun and it's something I don't usually do. So if you guys enjoyed this type of video and would like to see more like this, let me know down in the comments below. Hello. But for this time, that is it for me. Till next time, guys, you know what you can do. Keep on killing it. Bye, guys.